Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness's latest trailer just delivered some of the biggest Marvel fan payoff ever by confirming Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier, leader of the X-Men, as part of the MCU now. But there is an even crazier cameo in this trailer if you listen closely to the Illuminati shaming Doctor Strange in that moment. We should tell him the truth. I don't ever want to see it again! Yes, between a mystery glowing figure trading blows with Wanda and Ultron sentries as the foot soldiers of this Illuminati citadel, speculation has exploded that a variant of Tony Stark, the superior Iron Man, could appear in Multiverse of Madness, maybe even played by longtime fan casted Tom Cruise, who alongside Robert Downey Jr. back in the mid-2000s was originally considered for the role of Iron Man, giving us a glimpse into that alternate reality. But I'm going to explain who exactly this alternate version of Tony Stark Stark is, the multiversal logic that makes his membership on the Illuminati perfect for the MCU, and what role he could play in Multiverse of Madness and beyond. So in the latest trailer, Doctor Strange is detained in a facility that's actually shot in London's British Museum, home of the Rosetta Stone, an artifact really used as an nexus point among anthropologists to help them bridge together various ancient languages, which may be why Charles Xavier, as a student of history, chose this whole book as his nexus bridge across realities. But Doctor Strange is escorted by Ultron sentries. These are the drones built by Ultron in Age of Ultron, but originally part of Tony Stark's Iron Legion protocol to build a suit of armor around the world until the Mind Stone AI corrupted the algorithm and turned it evil. But the fact that these are now the foot soldiers tell us that someone in this compound is using this exact generation of Stark tech, but as Stark initially intended it to work. Then Strange faces a six-chair dais helmed by Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier, with the other five authorities, for now at least, left a mystery. But this is almost certainly Marvel's sixth member, Illuminati, which in the comics was founded by Tony Stark. Now, throughout this trailer, Wanda breaks into and attacks this compound, facing at least one glowing figure. Now, in most of these shots, the person looks like Monica Rambeau or her mother, Maria Rambeau, going binary the way Captain Marvel does, but maybe Monica tapping into her photon abilities that she gained in WandaVision. Now, I will admit, some angles look a bit more armored up, and if you pause at one particular frame, the motion blur does make the figure look like the hair is different and the lighting around the mouth a bit more goatee-like. It's just hard to tell with this quality. One still frame being shared around Twitter from VFX still being rendered doesn't really do it justice. Ultimately, I just doubt Marvel would introduce a variant Tony Stark like this after being so strategic and so deliberate with how they teased Patrick Stewart. But I totally get why fans think Iron Man will show up in this movie and I totally agree with them. I think he will because based on the Ultron centuries alone and this being a multiversal Illuminati, this has to be pointing at Superior Iron Man in Multiverse of Madness. In the Marvel comics, Superior Iron Man emerged from what was called the Axis event, in which magic reversed the morality of Earth's heroes and villains, but the corrupted Tony Stark shielded himself from that spell being reversed, and so he stayed evil, becoming what was known as the Superior Iron Man. He got society addicted to the extremist 3.0 virus via an addictive app, he used an army of drones as a police force, until the Jack Gas was eventually killed off in an incursion when the Marvel Universe and the Ultimates Universe collided, which was part of the stepping stones leading up to the 2015 Secret Wars event. All of this lines up perfectly with what Marvel Studios now seems to be setting up with an Ultron Sentry guarded multiverse overseeing Illuminati, as this entire cinematic universe braces for future crossover events like Avengers Secret Wars. Now, our friends at Upstart want you to start this year off right by getting out from under the credit card debt. It'll both help your peace of mind, and you don't even have to buy smaller pants like those with other popular resolutions. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can break the cycle of debt and get ahead. Upstart is a fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment. Upstart knows that you are more than just your credit score and is expanding access to affordable credit. Rather than looking at credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like your income, your current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan, find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash new rockstars. That's upstart.com slash new rockstars. Use our URL to let them know that we sent you upstart.com slash new rockstars. By simply including these Ultron sentries, this confirms that this compound runs on Stark tech 
but coming from a universe where Ultron drones can be trusted and controlled. While one could argue that they're being controlled by an evil Ultron himself, I just don't think Ultron or Ultron Infinity would really want to join any multiversal council. Rather, this looks like a successfully realized version of Tony Stark's original intention for Ultron to be a fully automated AI designed to operate his Iron Legion and keep the peace. Peace in our time. However, let's game that out. If there were a reality in which Ultron never betrayed Tony Stark, Tony never would have learned those critical lessons of responsibility that Age of Ultron taught him. He never would have moved Avengers Tower out of Manhattan to the more remote compound in upstate New York. There would have been no Sokovia disaster to guilt trip him with in Civil War. He just really would have spent a lot more time drinking, showing off trying to lift Mjolnir, and making poorly aged Prima Nocta jokes. Yeah, thanks for that one, Joss. To be honest, he just would have aged into a smug prick outsourcing all of his Avengerine to a fleet of drones and someone who, super importantly for this film, never ever got to know the Sokovian twins whose parents were killed by one of his bombs. Wanda Maximoff would have been just some random Hydra controlled witch who gave him a terrifying nightmare and then bounced. And we know how important that nightmare was to the Tony Stark of the MCU. But in this case, it leaves us with a live action version of the superior Iron Man, a jerk who loves to have his toys do everything for him, but a guy always fearing the one witch who got away. Now Wanda in this trailer said that Vision theorized about the multiverse, proving that Tony Stark's Jarvis AI tech eventually would have explored multiverse theory on its own and perhaps given this Tony Stark variant access to navigate the multiverse without having to use linear quantum time travel like our Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark did. Now again, I think the fact that we have a multiversal Illuminati tells us that this multiverse is really worried about incursions and it's all leading to what I believe will be the fifth Avengers film, Secret Wars. And in the 2015 comics of that, Doctor Doom brings back all the Marvel heroes and villains in a big multiversal arena called Battle World. It's awesome. However, I would be surprised if Superior Iron Man even made it that far. Because if he is played by a cameo as nuts as Tom Cruise, this sounds like a bit of stunt casting in which Tom Cruise plays an insane scene-stealing role where he goes hard like he did for his cameo in Tropic Thunder. For Cruise, this would just be the meta opportunity to show what he could have done after he was considered for the role in the mid-2000s before Robert Downey Jr. was cast and just really have fun with it. Lots of fun until the ghost of his past, Bloody Wanda, kicks down the door and wipes the floor with him. I would just hope that before that happens, this movie could show us a quick what if style montage of this Iron Man's past history. But those iconic MCU moments, Tom Cruise swapped in for Robert Downey Jr. Like hammering the armor in the cave with a box of scraps, pulling off his shades during the press conference saying, I am Iron Man, teaming up with War Machine and Iron Man 2, except now it's back to being Terrence Howard, all the way to his fateful line to Thanos and Endgame. Hell, Disney and Lucasfilm are already hired VFX artist Shamook to fix Luke Skywalker, and this guy made a great rendering of Tom Cruise as Iron Man. I mean, who knows? That might have been part of the reason why this guy was hired. So I just cannot wait to see this superior Iron Man freak out when Wanda begins yanking out the hearts of his precious Ultrons. Check out our great merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow NewRockStars. Subscribe to NewRockStars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>